Well, we have some breaking news in college sports. The Pac-12 has officially added four schools this morning. The Pac-12 was left with just two teams after the last round of realignment, but they're adding Boise State, Fresno State, Colorado State, and San Diego start State, starting with the 2026-27 academic year. They will join Oregon State and Washington State in the new look Pac-12. So here is what things look like. Now keep in mind, per NCAA rules, the Pac-12 has now two years to get back to the minimum of eight teams. And that clock is ticking. These moves also take the conference of the Mountain West down to eight teams. For more on this, let's go ahead and welcome in our own college football national reporter, Brandon Marcello. For more on this, Brandon, it is great to see you. You just saw the tweet there from the Pac-12 already welcoming these new teams to the conference. We'll just start with your initial reaction to, the, to this news. Yeah, it became very clear at the start of this month that this was moving in this direction, that the Pac-12 would end up poaching schools from the Mountain West. And why is that? Because... The Mountain West and the two remaining Pac-12 teams had scheduled a scheduling alliance here for the next year, and a deadline had passed where they could re-up that on September 1st. So everybody in the Mountain West, the administration, I should say, in the Mountain West Conference Office, were preparing for some type of news of hearing some schools potentially bolting for the Pac-12, and that all came together this week. And it'll be interesting to see where the Pac-12 goes from here, obviously as they try to get to that 18 threshold and whether there's more Mountain West schools they, they might try to go after. Yeah, let's get into that a little bit here. So obviously these moves didn't happen overnight. The long-term goal here is to rebuild the Pac-12 as a power level conference. However, you mentioned it, they still need two additional members to reach that FBS minimum, which is eight teams. So next order of business is to find two additional schools to join. What are your predictions? Yeah, it'll be interesting here. You know, CBS Sports were already reporting here through sourcing that the schools that could be potentially on this list here are a handful of schools from the American Athletic Conference that are west of the Mississippi River. So UTSA, Rice, Memphis, and North Texas are possibilities that the Pac-12 might look at here in the very near future. But also in the Mountain West, two programs that really stick out there, according to our sourcing, are Air Force and UNLV. UNLV is a school that makes the most sense because of one of its location, but also because of its uh, administration there and their funding within the athletics department and the way they play football. This will be something to watch here. I had a source tell me late last night when this was all coming together, the news was coming together about the four teams that the Pac-12 obviously was not done and something could be happening pretty soon, sooner than later, when it comes to adding at least two more schools. All right, so you threw out some schools' names there. I did want to ask you about one team in particular, which I'm seeing a lot of folks thought would be a decent fit, new addition. That's Utah State, especially when you consider the revenue that they bring in, both in basketball and in football. Do you see that being a possibility as well? I haven't heard any early murmurs around mm -hmm. Utah State yet, but that's not to say that there might be some jousting from the Utah State side <laughs> to maybe try and get involved there. It'll be interesting to see. I think that now that the, we see that the doors are open for the Pac-12, that the business is running and they're looking to relaunch, you're going to have several schools out there, potentially even outside the American and also outside the Mountain West, they are going to show some interest in that. But my belief is, from talking to the sources last night, is that they're going to move here pretty quickly mm. in adding two more schools. And remember, the new schools that are coming in from the Mountain West, these four new schools, they're going to have a say as to who they want and who they will approve. So there's been a lot of discussion about this, obviously, behind closed doors for the last few weeks. All right, let's turn things now to the football field here, Brandon. So when you look at all of these new additions, all these new four teams to the Pac-12, where would you rank this Pac-12 group in the group of five? It's a great question. I, I think we're in a new age now where it's no longer Power 5. It's going to be Power 4 mm -hmm. in the group of six, and the Pac-12 is going to be considered in that group of six school. Um, I, I think that's fair to say at this point. Where they rank among the group of six school, you know, uh, conferences at this point, they might end up being the top one, especially if they were to go in and raid the American Athletic Conference right now, which is really their strongest competition when it comes to the group of six schools at this point. Now, I did want to just a follow up here. Um, long term, obviously, not immediate right now. Do you ever see 
the Pac-12 maybe going to Cal or, or some of the other schools and, and say, why don't you come on home? Do you see that playing out at all? You know, if you remember, there was some some talk about those schools trying to rebuild the Pac-12 right. and they opted to go to the ACC. The question is, did they sign their grant of rights? And my understanding is yes. And as we know, with the lawsuit that Florida State and Clemson are battling right now, that grant of rights seems pretty ironclad. And for them to have signed it here recently, that's probably going to be something very difficult for them to get out of if they were even interested in joining the Pac-12. Of course, a lot of issues there for those two schools just because of the travel with the ACC. And staying in a new reformed Pac-12 makes a lot of sense from that standpoint. But again, a lot of paperwork there that they've signed with the ACC that has them locked into their new conference. How does this all kind of break down financially and also when it comes to TV deals out there? Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to watch. Right now, and my understanding from the scheduling agreement that the Pac-12 and Mountain West had put together here the last year, that with four schools leaving right now, the Pac-12 will end up owing them about 47 million dollars maybe a little bit north of that and in addition each school is going to have to pay their own exit fee which is about 15 to 17 million dollars so you're looking at a, a total here of a little bit north of 110 million dollars mm -hmm. when all is said and done so that these schools can enter the conference in the pac-12 starting in 2026. as we look to put a bow on this here brandon mountain west now down to eight teams what is the temperature right now of the remaining teams in that conference right now you know, I think a lot of them will be looking around trying to see, one, maybe we should try and join the Pac-12, but also what does our future hold? And does it potentially bring something to go to court? Could there be litigation here between the Mountain West and the Pac-12 as maybe the Mountain West tries to survive? And for that matter, the commissioner there, the, the Mountain West, do you look at maybe just trying to form a new partnership where they swallow the rest of the Mountain West schools and you kind of wash your hands with it and they kind of keep uh, the same group together and as far as administrative work and everything there was talk about that even uh just months ago before the scheduling agreement was agreed upon but at that time they just wanted wanted to work on a temporary solution it's interesting it, you know in this new age of college football realignment if you schedule uh some type of scheduling agreement with someone in alliance so to speak it's usually the bigger conference swallowing the other. The Big Ten and the Pac-12, remember, having their scheduling alliance and the Pac-12 ended up folding when the Big Ten raided them. And here we are now, a couple of years later, mm -hmm. in the Pac-12 scheduling an alliance with the Mountain West, and now they maybe are swallowing up the Mountain West and, and killing it. It's uh, very interesting times in the college athletics space. Well, one more before I let you go, Brandon. In terms of impact, when we talk about the postseason and bowl games, does this bring the Rose Bowl back in play? Very interesting question and something I'm going to need to look into. Uh, it's a great, great question. Uh, obviously, a lot of tradition and everything that goes in with that. But also, you have to consider it's the same brand, the same logo, but this is not the same Pac-12. It's not the same school. So I'm sure that's something that's going to have to be addressed here in the future once they do finalize themselves. Remember, the NCAA requires the Pac-12 to have at least eight teams to be considered a conference. So right. this is something that's going to work out when it comes to the Rose Bowl or whatever here over the next couple of years where they have to decide and figure out what their bowl tie-ins are going to be. Brandon Marcello joining us live here on CBS Sports HQ for the breaking news surrounding the Pac-12 as they welcome four new schools from the Mountain West. Thanks so much for joining us, Brandon. All right, we have a doubleheader coming up this Saturday on CBS. You can stream also on Paramount Plus, but look at that Notre Dame at Purdue. Riley Leonard is reportedly all set to go. Notre Dame looking to bounce back from that awful season opening loss to Northern Illinois. And you can watch the new member of the, the Pac-12, Colorado State, take on Jador Sanders and Travis Hunter when they welcome them to town 730 Eastern on Saturday.